Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at a photo editing technique that for me personally was a bit of a game changer and completely changed the way I edit images in Adobe Lightroom. So in one of my recent videos I was out at Padley Gorge with Kieran Sudderby and we were trying to capture all the amazing autumn colours in the woodland area there. And one of the shots that I got is this one. And if you haven't seen that video and want to go back and watch it, I'll put a link up top. And one of the comments I got was from Dan Spencer, and he asked, how did I create the effect to make the young sapling tree really stand out from the background? So that's what I want to go through today. I'm going to show you how to create that separation using masks and the general tools within Lightroom to change the colour and the temperature and the exposure of that sapling but to let the background remain cool and darker so that you really get that separation and it pops out from the background. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Okay, so this is the original image. It's just been cropped to a one by one square format. And I'm gonna to start to apply the process to make that sapling just really stand out from the background. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just click auto and I'm going to start next by dropping the temperature. So I'm going to come down to about 4 to 4 to. I'm going to leave the tint. And I'm going to bring the exposure down quite a lot. So I'm going to go to about 0.80. Now it's important to say that when I first did this, I didn't have the exact numbers in mind. I was playing around with these sliders until I found what was right for this particular image. You're going to need to do the same for your image, it won't be the same numbers for every single image, so play around the sliders until you find the effect that you want. I'm just going to read you about the numbers that I've already found. So that was on minus 0.80, I'm going to leave contrast where it is, highlights, they're okay, shadows, I'm going to bring those up slightly, and Whites, I will bring those up very slightly as well. Blacks are okay, I'll leave those where they are. Now we're just going to reduce the texture and clarity in the image. So we bring that texture down to about minus 24, clarity down to about minus 42, and that's just going to soften the overall look of the image. But what we're going to do later is bring back the clarity and texture as well as some colour in the sapling. D here is I'll leave where it is. Vibrance is OK. Saturation I'm going to set to 0. Now I'm going to move on to colour. I think when I first did this I actually did the colour first and then the exposure. But uh, we've done the exposure now so I'll just tell you the colour values that I came up with. I brought the orange down to about minus 20. Yellow I brought down to just about minus 4. This just helps create that extra autumnal orangey golden look and normally I would bring the green right down with an autumn image so I would bring that right down to make the greens more yellow but for this particular image I want the little sapling as my subject and I want that to really stand out from the background so I'm going to leave the background green and then emphasize the yellow and orange in the sapling uh, with the saturation I'm going to bring the orange down to about minus eight I think I felt it was just a bit too oversaturated with the orange um, without doing that. And the yellow, similarly, I'm going to bring that down to minus 14. The green, even though I've not changed the hue, I'm going to bring the saturation quite far down with that. So we'll go all the way down to minus 61. And this is just another technique that you can use to create separation and really make your subject pop out. So we're going to have like a background that's going to be quite nicely desaturated and then our subject will have more saturation. So I think that's more or less it for the overall image. What we need to do now is mask our little tree. So if you haven't updated Lightroom in a little while, this might look different to you. But we've got a brand new panel now in Lightroom for masks. You'll see I've got two masks in there already. I'm going to show you what they're doing at the end. But for now, we're just going to create a new mask by clicking this little button here. And we'll click Radial Gradient. And we'll just draw out the Radial Gradient over the area that the tree covers. Now what we need to do is subtract the areas that we don't want to affect. We only want to affect 
the red areas and those red areas should be over the tree. So the first way I'm going to do that is if I just click on mask here, I can click subtract and I'm going to click on color range and now I can subtract color areas of color that I don't want to be in the red area. So for example, if I click here on the tree, it'll remove that color. Then I can hold shift, click another area and again, and I can keep doing that up to about five colors, I think. Let's see if I can do another one. Now you'll see there that five samples is the maximum. But that's got us quite far. We've taken away quite a lot of that red area that we didn't want to affect. What I'm going to do now is add another subtraction, but this time I'm going to click brush. And with this, I can literally just brush onto the areas that I don't want. If you want, you can use the brush for the entire area that you don't want. I find it quicker sometimes just to use the uh, the color range or sometimes luminance range. Luminance range will look for um, areas of darkness and lightness in the image and you can choose which one you want to subtract. Or like I said, if you want, you can just use the brush for the whole thing. It's completely up to you. And the new masking tools in Lightroom are really flexible for that very reason. And depending on your image, you'll need to be more or less accurate. For this particular image, I found that I didn't need to be especially accurate. But it all depends on your background and I just encourage you to keep checking when you start making your changes to exposure or colour. Keep checking your image and see if it's affecting areas of the image that you don't want it to. And then you can adjust your mask accordingly. So we're getting there now. Just get these little bits in between. probably took a bit more time than this the first time around but I think for now that'll do. Okie dokie. So all the red area that we can see in the image there is going to get affected when I change the sliders here. So what I'm going to do is bring up the temperature slider because if you remember we brought down the overall temperature of the image and now we're just going to put some of that temperature back into the area that we want to affect. Similarly, I'm going to bring up the exposure quite a lot to plus 0.95. And you see the little sapling is really starting to pop out now from the background. We're going to raise the white levels to about 13. And we need to put some of that texture and clarity back now. So. We'll go all the way up to about 23 with the texture and clarity. I'm going to go up to 28. Okay, that's starting to come together. With the hue slider, I'm just going to come down to about minus 3.6, and that's just changing the color slightly of the tree. So I can actually put it in there, minus 3.6. That just makes it look a little bit more autumnal again, more orange, more golden yellow. And that is more or less okay now, I think. I'm gonna close that. And the final thing I'm gonna do is just put a vignette on there. And this just helps to really focus attention onto the subject in the middle there. I'll just bring the feather up a little bit to 54. And there we go. As I said, there were two other masks that I used. So if we just have a look at what they're doing, I'm not going to go into detail of what I did, but I'll tell you roughly what they're doing. So if we turn this one on here, you'll see that it's just putting a little bit of highlights and it's just dodging some areas around the tree branches. So I just painted that mask on with a brush and then I've raised the exposure and the shadows a little bit. And then the next one down here, if we turn that one on, you'll see 
I've used some dehaze and reduced the clarity in the background. And that just helps to add some depth to the image and I think it just gives it that painted feeling. So there we go, that's the final image. So you can see just how powerful those tools are in Adobe Lightroom. Using the masks and the sliders, you can really get some great separation in your image. And you've just got all around great control to be able to alter separate parts of your image independently from each other. It's great if you can go out and get the fog and you can get natural separation from that fog and so it hides the branches and things behind your main subject. Or perhaps if you've got some great light shining on the tree and your background is naturally thrown into shadow. But when you can't get those conditions, it's really reassuring to know that you can use these kind of tools to bring out some of the elements in your image and turn an average image into a much better one. So that's about it for this week. I hope you found the video useful. If you have, please give me a thumbs up down below. If you're new to the channel, then why not subscribe? As I always say, you can click down here on the big red button or over here on my face. And that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. UK time. So that is it for this one. But I hope you'll catch me next week for the next one. And until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.